Hey everybody, it is, what is it, Monday, October the 25th, 2021, 10.05 in the morning. I'm late here, my apologies. I try to get as close to 10 o'clock as I can, and sometimes I'm just a few minutes late. But here we are, consistency, faithfulness, that's what we're striving for here. So we're in the book of Ezra, <coughs> pardon me, three days, <coughs> oh boy, <coughs> excuse me. Three days left, today, tomorrow, Wednesday, and we're finished with the book of Ezra. His contemporary is Nehemiah. Those two books are side by side in the Bible, Ezra and then Nehemiah. We also learned that Daniel, Esther, Mordecai, Haggai, Zechariah, Daniel, I don't know if I said Daniel or not, they're all a part of the same period of time where God allowed the Israelites to be taken captive by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, because of their disobedience to him. And so here, chapter number eight, the temple has been rebuilt. It's been dedicated. Those who remember the old temple, they're a bit disappointed. They remember the glory and the power of God that came. This one, not quite the same. And so uh, they wept. The young people shouted, though. They were optimistic, looking forward to what God was going to do. So let's pray, and we'll jump into chapter number eight. Father, we love you, and we're asking your blessing on our reading here. Help us to have wisdom from this book. I pray that you'll help our lives with what we read today. Give us the mind of Christ, please. In his name we ask these things. Amen. All right, so Ezra chapter number eight, 36 verses, if I'm not mistaken, and we're going to just read great portions of this chapter without a lot of commentary, because this is an informational and an organizational type chapter. We've seen these before. <coughs> we have said there is merit in these passages. There's something for us to take from them. And so don't forget uh, that you'll learn something here. Verse number one, chapter eight, Ezra. These are now the chief of their fathers, and this is the genealogy of them that went up with me from Babylon in the reign of Artaxerxes the king. So Ezra's going to tell us who went with him from Persia back into Jerusalem. Of the sons of Phinehas, Gershom. Of the sons of Ithamar, Daniel. Of the sons of David, Hattush. Of the sons of Shechaniah. Of the sons of Farosh, Zechariah. And with him were reckoned by genealogy of the males, and 150. Of the sons of Pehath Moab, Eli Hoanai, the son of Zerahiah, and with him two hundred males. Of the sons of Shechaniah, the son of Jehaziel, and with him three hundred males. Of the sons also of Adin, Ebed, the son of Jonathan, and with him fifty males. And of the sons Elam, Jeshiah, the son of Athaliah, and with him seventy males. And of the sons of Shephatiah, Zebediah, the son of Michael, and with him fourscore males. Of the sons of Joab, Obadiah, the son of Jehiel, and with him two hundred and eighteen males. And the sons of Shelomith, the son of Josephiah, and with him an hundred and three score males. And of the sons of Bebai, <coughs> Zechariah, the son of Bebai, and with him twenty and eight males. And of the sons of Asgad, Johanan, the son of Hakatan, and with him an hundred and ten males. And of the last sons of Adonikam, whose names are these, Eliphelet, Jeel, Shemaiah, and with them three score males. Of the sons also of Bigvi, Uthai, and Zabud, and with them seventy males. So these are the people that went with Ezra and back into Jerusalem after the king released them. So he's got his group here. So let's think about some takeaways. We've talked about this before. Every individual matters. Every person matters. When we're trying to accomplish the work for God, every single person matters. Who you have involved in this area and who's involved in this area, who's responsible for getting this done and who's going to take care of this. All of those things matter greatly. You matter in the work of the Lord. You matter in the work of your local church. You really do. And so don't underestimate yourself. Don't think that you have nothing to contribute. You do. There's something for you to get accomplished. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm terribly congested today. And so please don't underestimate yourself. And on top of that, you're noticed by the Lord God. You're noticed by those 
who you're serving with and maybe even serving under. Your pastor sees. He knows what you're doing. He doesn't have time to tell you every single day. He doesn't have time to to make sure that you're aware that he's appreciative. He is appreciative, trust me. But as the work grows, it's hard to stay on top of all of that. So just know your contribution is important and it matters greatly. Verse 15, so a little shift in the chapter here. I gathered them together to the river that runneth to Ahava, and there abode we in tents three days. And I viewed the people and the priests, and found there none of the sons of Levi. So Ezra's concerned now, none of the preacher's kids are around. Then sent I for Eliezer, for Ariel, for Shemaiah, for Elnathan, and for Jerib, and for Elnathan, and for Nathan, and for Zechariah, and for Meshulam, chief men, also for Joyirab, I don't know if I said that right, and for Elnathan, men of understanding. And I sent them with commandment unto Edo, the chief at the place Kesaphia, and I told them that they what they should say unto Edo. And to his brethren, the Nethanims at the place Kesaphia, that they should bring unto us ministers for the house of our God. And by the good hand of our God upon us, that phrase we see throughout Nehemiah, we see it now throughout Ezra here, the good hand of God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding of the sons of Mali, the son of Levi, the son of Israel, and Sherebiah with his sons and his brethren, 18, and Hashabiah, and with him Jeshiah of the sons of Merari, his brethren and their sons twenty, also of the Nethanims, whom David and the princes had appointed for the service of the Levites, two hundred and twenty Nethanims, all of them were expressed by name. Verse 21, Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, <clears throat> that we might afflict ourselves before our God, to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way, because we had spoken unto the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all them that for good that seek him. But his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. This is a very interesting portion of scripture here, those three verses. What What's happening is Ezra knows that there are going to be some enemies in the way as they try to make their way to Jerusalem. And so he says, you know, I told the king that God was on our side and God was against our enemies. And we're praying and fasting that God shows us how to get to Jerusalem without having to suffer defeat at the hand of our enemies. Because I was not going to go to the king and ask him for help. If I asked the king for help after I had already told him God was enough, then he's going to think, that God must not be enough for these people. And so he refused to ask the king for military help. And so the lesson here is always turn to God first and foremost. God can take care of your needs. He can guide and direct you for what it is he wants you to do uh, and how he wants you to do it. You don't necessarily need the help of others. Now, I say necessarily because God will sometimes use other people, but don't rely on those people. God's work will go on regardless of who decides they're going to be involved and to whatever degree. You know, I've had folks in our church before, they, even as they've, they've left our church, they get mad at me and they'll say, uh, you know, we'll see how things go without me or without us. And, and I think, well, I hate to break it to you, but it's going to go just fine because this isn't about you. It's not about me. It's about God. It's his work. It's his church. And so God, God's work moves on with or without us. And so they're fasting and they're asking God. And the Bible says that he was entreated of us. And so God helps the people here. Let's see what he does. Verse 24. Then I separated 12 of the chief priests, Sherebiah and Hashabiah, and 10 of their brethren with them, 
and weighed unto them the silver and the gold and the vessels, even the offering of the house of our God, which the king and his counselors and his lords and all Israel there present had offered. I even weighed under their hands six hundred and fifty talents of silver and silver vessels, and hundred talents and of gold and hundred talents, also twenty basins of gold and a thousand drams, and two vessels of fine copper, precious as gold. And I said unto them, Ye are holy unto the Lord. The vessels are holy also, and the silver and the gold are a free will offering unto the Lord God of your fathers. Watch ye and keep them until ye weigh them before the chief of the priests and the Levites, the, and the chief of the fathers of Israel at Jerusalem, in the chambers of the house of the Lord. And so Ezra is giving responsibility to these men. And he gives them this great wealth, all of these vessels that Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple, and now Cyrus is allowing to be brought back to the temple. And so he says, hey, you're responsible for these. When you get to Jerusalem, these things are going to be weighed, and they're going to be uh, added to the inventory. You need to make sure that you turn in exactly what I gave you. Verse 31 <clears throat> then we departed from the river of Ahava on the twelfth day of the first month to go unto Jerusalem, and the hand of our God was upon us. And he delivered us from the hand of the enemy and of such as lay in wait by the way. And we came to Jerusalem and abode there three days. Now on the fourth day was the silver and the gold and the vessels weighed in the house of our God by the hand of Merimoth, the son of Uriah the priest. And with him was Eleazar the son of Phinehas, and with them was Jazabad the son of Jeshua, and Noadiah the son of Benui, Levites, by number and by weight of every one. And all the weight was written at that time. Also the children of those that had been carried away, which were come out of the captivity, offered burnt offerings unto the God of Israel, twelve bullocks for all Israel, ninety and six rams, seventy and seven lambs, twelve he goats for a sin offering, all this was a burnt offering unto the Lord. And they delivered the king's commissions unto the king's lieutenants and to the governors on the side of the river, and they furthered the people and the house of God. And so the work of God is moving forward. It's continuing. Things are going as they're supposed to go. <clears throat> and notice here, there's great accountability. This whole chapter screams to me, the theme accountability. You've got Ezra accounting of the people that left Babylon with him. Then you've got all of the numbers of young men that were with each of those people. You have him then wondering, where are all the Levites? Where are my priests? What are they up to? They proclaim a fast so that they don't have to ask of the king an army of soldiers to help prepare the way for them as they make their way to Jerusalem. God honors that fast. Even a fast has to be organized, you understand. And so he does all of that for them. Then we see that he takes these men and he makes them accountable by giving them specific duties. Every Christian needs a specific duty. You should have a job at your church. If you're, you're thinking right now, well, all I do is sit in service, then you need to go to your pastor and say, I need a job. I need something to do every single week. Please give me a task that'll make me accountable. You need accountability. This work for God can't just be left up to our how we feel and our whims. It's more important than that. And so here he's giving these men accountability. They show up. Others take inventory. We read it, how they wrote it all down, keeping track of organization and accountability, the great theme of this chapter. How's the organization in your life? Could you use to be more organized? Could you use to have a budget you live by? How about a schedule that you keep? Could you do that? How about accountability? Is there anyone that you answer to, to make sure that you're doing the things you're supposed to do? That's important as well. All right, that's chapter number eight. In the books, two more to go, and we'll have finished Ezra. I really love these books. I love the zeal and building something for God, and that's why Ezra and Nehemiah matter so much to me. All right, I'm going to leave you alone. As always, I ask, please like, love, and share the post. Let people know that we're out here, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning, Lord willing, for chapter number nine. Have a great day today. God bless you.